he was he was um as true a, as true an exponent of meritocracy as perhaps history has given us um you mentioned yes, none so. of his soldiers ever turned around and betrayed him one of his most senior generals was actually someone who fell him from a horse right um on the opposition army yes. and he was like wow that guy's yes. a good uh, a good archer a good soldier here we go i'm gonna pluck him and i'm going to bring him into my army and when he would conquer cities he would intentionally not kill the educated the craftsmen because they had a merit they had a value um and right. it, it's right. such an amazing thing which is like so obvious to us that one should reward merit but so many times in history even right now we're seeing in grand political institutions meritocracy isn't actually always given priority yes yes oh you're right i mean the example that you use about uh, the man who chingis khan actually renamed is jeb jeb yeah. he knew he named him that which means uh, you know, the bow and arrow but, but he shot the horse of chingis khan it was his act of bravery in shooting the horse of the commander, but also that when Chinggis Khan said to the captured soldiers, who did this? He came forward immediately. And that impressed Chinggis Khan, that he was honest and he was willing to come forward and die so as not to implicate any of his own men. Chinggis Khan knew that man, you could trust him to the end of the mm -hmm. earth. And it was true. He trusted him for the rest of his life and he became one of the greatest generals. Mm -hmm. Uh, so yes, his people were very loyal to him. And as I said before, he destroyed the aristocracy everywhere he went. He killed them off because they had betrayed him early on so often, he got rid of them. He didn't do this kind of let's intermarry and let's become a mix. No, no. Those kings, their families, they were killed off. And it was people from the bottom who were allowed to rise up of, of, of every sort. Many of the officials in the Mongol rule in the uh, in the Muslim lands where actually Christians or Jews were used. They had no problem. Mm -hmm. Mongols had no problem with that. But you know, in our life, our greatest virtue is also always our most vulnerable vice, I think. You know, and in the end of life, he favored his own sons. Mm -hmm. Tremendous. Over the meritocracy. He had... Uh, yeah, he, he, he favored his daughters first, and that, I think, was absolutely fine because they were better. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they were better educated. They were better educated. Uh, they did an excellent job of ministering uh, many of the lands that he conquered. He relied on them tremendously, and he respected them, and at least uh, one of them could read and write. We don't know what language she was reading and writing, if it's one or not. It's not recorded, but uh, she was the Chinese uh, envoys just were marveled that this woman was always doing the legal papers by reading and writing, as opposed to just sitting there and decreeing. Mm -hmm. So his daughters were excellent, uh, and I think they rose through meritocracy. He also he chose excellent wives for his sons. They were extremely. He had a good taste in women. And yeah, he knew how to. Well, it was talent. I really think when you have one million people. I mean, first of all, his mother raised him. And he relied on mm -hmm. her greatly. He relied on his wife, uh, Bursta, especially. Uh, so it was, I, you know, I don't see this ideological in any way. I just see it as a practical thing of we need every skill we can get. Mm -hmm. And he recognized women had skills men didn't have. They weren't the best at battle, so you don't send them off to war. But they were very good for commerce, mandling the silk, uh, managing the Silk Route, uh, these other countries. Along the, uh, and then, but in the end... He did turn the empire over to his sons. He turned areas over to his daughters and to his wives. And I don't think he realized that by turning so much power over to his sons that they would soon squeeze out the female members of the family, yeah. which they did, unfortunately. And I, I understand, you know, your family and your love for your own children can sometimes override your own principles. Mm. So at the end of life, he yielded, and he gave power to his sons. And they did a good job for a while. They expanded the empire, went on for some time, and then when his son, Gude Han, died, and he was taken over by the daughter-in-law, whom Chigas Han had chosen, daughter 
She was perhaps the greatest of all of his successors. Mm. Dorij, I call her Dorij the Great. She ruled for five years. She ruled the largest empire in the history of the world. It was even larger than that of Chinggis Khan. Wow. Because her husband, and her, yes, oh, she ruled. And it was a time of peace. There was no expansion under her. It was a time of great commercial advancement and peace. The world today, who's ever heard of Dorijin mm. uh, Hatu, they call it, Dorijin Hatu, the great queen of Mongolia, the empress of the largest empire in the history of the world. Oh, wow. For any man, no man ever ruled a larger one, no woman ever ruled a larger one. I don't even remember her. But she was a daughter-in-law chosen for uh, her husband by Chinggis Khan. Mm -hmm. He chose her for his son. So he had great, excellent skills for deciding who was good and useful. Yeah. But in the end, he yielded to the love. And I think also, again, in part, his grandson, whom he loved so much, having been killed, his most capable grandson. I think it, it, it makes odd emotions, you know, not just mourning at all, but I think it made him more attached in some ways to his to son. His family, And yeah. really regretting. Because right? late in life, he tried to reteach his sons. He took them out to battles to discuss things. He tried to force them to work together. You two campaigned this. Mm -hmm. And then when they would fight, he would try to... He tried very hard. But they were past early middle-aged men. Mm -hmm. They're not trainable, mm -hmm. you know. You can't train a middle-aged man. <laughs> and, you know, it's just, uh, I think it's one of the tragedies of his life, is that personal drama. Just failing at the very end with his children to, to pass the torch. But it's quite, it's quite yes. the... Um, Yes. You know, it's quite the torch to, to take, though, to carry, to walk in Cengiz Khan's yes. shoes. There yes. probably was no one else who could have, perhaps his uh, daughter-in-law, this, um, this empress queen. But, um, yeah, yeah. you know, 